Welcome, everyone. Welcome to the Baruch College Campus High School uh, virtual open house. We are going to get started now. And before we start our presentation, just want to take a moment and introduce everyone who's here today to present on our open house. My name is Alicia Perez Katz. I'm the principal, and I'm going to pass it over to Mr. Kaiser. Hello, my name is Douglas Kaiser. Um, the assistant principal. Hi everyone, I'm Stephanie Smith. I'm the ninth and 10th grade uh, guidance counselor. And so Giselle, why don't you introduce yourself? Uh, hi, my name is Giselle. I am student gov club coordinator and- And on the basketball team. And on the basketball team. And uh, I also am on equity team as well. Lauren? Hi, I'm Lauren, I'm the senior at Baruch. I'm the treasurer of the National Honor Society and also secretary for Cookies for Kids Cancer and Cure Tutoring. Thank you. Elizabeth? Um, hi, everyone. I'm Elizabeth. I'm also a senior. Um, I transferred to um, Baruch during my sophomore year. Um, I'm the president of the school's um, newspaper. Um, I'm also like the, on the executive board of like the Red Cross Club, um, Key Club, and um, the Black and Latino Student Union. Uh, Leela? Hi, I'm Leela. I'm a senior. I'm vice president of both, or co-president of both philosophy club and film club, and I'm the stage manager of drama club. And Maud. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Maud. Uh, I'm also a senior, and I was one of the starters on the volleyball team, as well as in charge of senior mentors this year. Thank you very much. All right, so welcome everyone. Um, I'm gonna start us off this evening. What we're going to do just to give you a sense of the format is you're going to hear from me and Mr. Kaiser, the assistant principal. Our student representatives are gonna share some of their experiences. Also, if you have questions while we're presenting, you can type them in the chat and our student ambassadors will be answering them to the best they can as we're presenting. Um, we'll also have an opportunity before we close for the last 15 minutes or so of this uh, event to go into breakout rooms where you can have uh, more one-on-one -on -one conversations with our student leaders. So we'll have two breakout rooms that you can choose to stay and go to if you'd like. The tour will last about an hour, and then we are going to close at 7.30. So we'll send a notice to the breakout rooms that they'll be closing, and then we will not come back to the main space. So I hope you enjoy this evening, and we can get some of your questions answered. Uh, the video you just saw uh, is of our school prior to the pandemic, um, and we definitely miss those days, but we are coming back strong. So you saw a lot of pictures there of our unmasked kids and it brings a lot of nostalgia, but it does capture the heart of Baruch and we are making our way back there. So now we're gonna dive into here some more current pictures there this year. So here's a snapshot into our school, what it's looking like now. Uh, 2021. So we've got our Baruch ambassadors there. Some of them are here with us tonight and they uh, really embodied our philosophy of who we are as Baruch. So when we met, went to reopen the school, we had a committee of students, parents and teachers and guidance counselors and staff. And we worked over throughout last year and also this summer to talk about and envision what are our values, what's important to us as a school and how will we reopen from the pandemic. And the Baruch Ambassadors is one program that has developed over the years and came also out of this meeting of the minds, I like to say. And it really was about how are we developing leadership in our students? So for our older students, our juniors and seniors, particularly opportunities to lead, to have, to have something that with purpose in their lives and be able to also help our younger students, in this case, ninth and 10th graders were new to our school this year, understand and know what does it mean to be a Baruchian. And a Baruchian is, we're gonna talk about our core values that we have as a school, but we really are developing what we like to say is a well-rounded uh, adult. And we are a true liberal arts school, meaning that we emphasize both STEM classes and the humanities classes equally across all of our classes. We focus on critical thinking and student voice 
and ultimately student leadership. And you're gonna see that throughout, through how our clubs are structured, our classes and the decisions that we make as a school. Um, so our philosophy is not just developing students that are college ready, but that will also succeed beyond in terms of being able to question the world around them and be part of the solutions to the problems in our society. So I'll touch on our core values. As I mentioned before, these really frame how we approach teaching and learning at Baruch. Um, we do feel the work in the classroom is the most important space. We have a strong focus on high quality instruction and student engagement in learning. And that I believe is what's made our school so successful as it has been over the years. Uh, our four, four, four core values are rigor, community, real world connections and global citizenship. These again were developed by really doing a deep dive into what kinds of things we saw as commonalities across our curriculum years ago and really being able to capture and identify our values. When we talk about rigor, we don't talk about hours and hours of work. Um, we really talk about rigor as high level critical thinking. So I mentioned that before. How are students have minds on in their learning? Where are there opportunities for them to understand the why behind things in mathematics and science? So some examples we have um, in the 10th grade, the students do an interdisciplinary social action themed uh, project across math, science, English, and history. And they look to solve problems in society, but it's grounded in texts. They use statistics and mathematics to have Instagram uh, social action surveys and get information out to the community and see what the response rate is. They, in their environmental and earth science, they are looking at the impact on our planet. So there are connections across all four core subjects where we're asking students to apply their learning. And that example really ties into also our real world connections and global citizenship. Um, our focus on community, you'll hear a lot about advisory. One of the things that makes our school unique is that we have had always an advisory program in our school. And while it's evolved over the years to meet the needs of our students and our community, one thing that stayed the same is we've always kept the advisories together for their four years of high school. So ideally the advisories loop with the same teacher for all four years. When we've had a teacher who may uh, leave the school, the students still stay together. We say advisory is like your family. And we really do believe that those connections are made over a long period of time, that consistency, that community, the advisor is the contact to the family. They only have about 25 students max in their advisory. So they get to know the families well, they get to know students well, they help them set goals and focus and think about their future. And so we really build community advisory, but we also focus on building it across the school. And you'll see that throughout tonight's presentation. Real world connections, again, as I mentioned that project, but we try to also learning, we are a Regents aligned school. Students do take the Regents exams at Baruch High School. We also emphasize project-based learning and we have students apply their learning to the real world wherever we can make those connections. Um, and global citizenship is something important because that's how we're preparing our 21st century learners. They are entering a global economy. We wanna make sure that there's access to not only what's happening within our community, but the broader world around them and also valuing the many different identities and cultures that our students bring into our school as we are a kind of a global school being in New York City. We have students from many, many different countries, languages and backgrounds. So we find opportunities, whether it's through celebration or within the classroom, within our clubs for students to broaden their connections and look at their world as a whole. We also anchor in our three uh, school-wide beliefs. So we talk about how are you as a person? So it's not just the academics and the learning, but we're also developing people from young adolescents when they enter and then they leave as adults. And so we say, how are we helping form adults that are gonna be the leaders in our society? And we talk about adolescence. It's like you're walking a tightrope across the Grand Canyon. <laughs> and our job as Baruch High School is to provide the net we know that students will stumble and fall sometimes, but they get back up and they'll make it to the other side, a fully formed adult. So that is our goal. And so we do that by developing our three E's. We say we are empathetic. So how do we develop kindness, care, and understanding towards others? We are enthusiastic. So how do we show curiosity in our learning, think critically, um, and bring joy into the classroom? And then how are we extraordinary? 
And we use that term instead of excellence. Excellence means mastery and completion and perfection, but rather we are always seeking our own self-improvement, focusing on where we are and where we can do our best okay. and how do we develop ourselves and our peers. Okay. So again, this ties back into community. Yeah, These values to... are um, across the classes. So that's who we are as Brookians. Sorry, I'm having trouble with the slides today. So the next thing I'm just gonna to touch on are what kinds of courses do students take while they're at Baruch? So a quick overview of our courses. We have, as I said, we are a uh, liberal arts school, meaning that we cover math, science, English, and history equally. So students take all through all four years of high school. They do take all of those courses. They have choices starting in the 10th grade for AP classes. Um, and that goes through 11th and 12th grade. We offer AP Environmental Science to our sophomores. We have AP um, English in 11th and 12th grade. We have AP History in 11th and 12th grade. And we also have AP Calculus in 12th grade and AP Statistics in 11th grade. We also have a partnership with Baruch College, hence our name. And our seniors can take College Calculus that's taught by a professor that is a dual credited course. And that course is open to any student who can pass the entrance exam, uh, regardless of whether or not they enter in um, ninth grade in algebra or in geometry. So if a student is advanced in math and they're able to do that, um, they can take the college calculus course, which is the highest level math class that we offer. We also offer in our ninth grade, our students pretty much take the same courses. So just thinking about coming into ninth grade, students would complete um, introductory courses. So they'll take global literature, global history, Spanish one or two, depending on the level that they took in middle school, art, um, living environment or pre-AP biology. And um, I'm not sure if I covered English, math, science, history and advisory. I believe you guys will let me know if I've skipped anything. Sorry, I got distracted. Um, and the, the choices students have are when they get older, they also have electives in 11th and 12th grade. We have a college preparatory class that all of our juniors take in 11th grade in the spring, and then they take it in the fall term as well. And our electives range, we have computer science, we have a partnership with Amazon, so students learn Python, and we also have sociology and psychology. Um, this year, we're also able to offer psychology and business uh, for our juniors and seniors through Brew College for college credit. So we do have a wide range of courses. We are a small school, so our students do take some of the same courses together, but there are opportunities for students to take um, other courses as they go through the cycle. Um, I'm not sure, were we gonna have a student talk a little bit about their experience with the coursework, Ms. Smith? Yeah, um, Lauren was going to talk about managing the workload and as a ninth grader and now as a senior taking APs but she was having some internet issues. Lauren, are you Is with us? Okay now? Yeah, we can hear you fine. Thanks, hon. Okay. So, hi everyone. So, like Ms. Perez said, there's many different advanced courses throughout your time at Baruch, but as someone who took um, the Regents class for Algebra One and Living Environment, in eighth grade, I was able to go to the advanced course in ninth grade. So managing your time, it works, but you have to, you know, pay attention to where you have possible free periods or like some extra time. So, you know, right now for my 12th grade year, I have many, many free periods because I'm taking a lot of AP courses and college calculus. So instead of, you know, maybe doing something you know, that's more fun. I'll start to do my work in school where I can still focus. Right, so as a, as a student taking high college calculus as a high school class, they, um, they're on more of a college schedule. So they have more free time during the day and have to use that time wisely um, because they're earning high school and college credits at the same time. Thanks, Lauren. Okay. Um, so the next thing we're going to talk about are the arts. We touched on that briefly. So we offer visual art at Baruch High School. All students take it in ninth and 10th grade. These are just some images this year of students in um, our visual art class, but also the picture on the left is a project in our AP environmental science class 
So we infuse the arts into our academic classes as well. We have partnerships with theater organizations. So we have a partnership with Manhattan Class Company Theater. Uh, we do a poetry slam in the 10th grade with them. We also have a partnership with um, LEAP, which is an organization that will be doing monologue development with our ninth graders through ELA this year. We have a partnership with a dance organization. The students are gonna be choreographing their own dances in PE class. And we also have a partnership with a film uh, making organization. Students are gonna be developing film in the 10th grade and a partnership with a social action organization to help our students with their social action projects. Lastly, we have a partnership with Solar One in our science classes where students will be looking at sustainability, which is not the arts, but it's another enrichment. So we really leverage New York City and all it has to offer to bring partnerships into our school in addition to our two-year visual art course. And I think Leela, Ms. Smith, if we're not right, is gonna talk about her experiences with the arts. Yeah, Leela, and Leela mentioned in the chat the, the sh um, shoe project, um, which you had a picture of in the arts, and she's gonna talk about the performing arts she's been involved in too. So um, again, I'm stage manager for Drama Club, so I know just a little bit about the drama program at uh, Baruch. And it's really interesting because uh, we operate within the clubs kind of section. So uh, anyone who wants to participate in drama can just join the club and then we can all work together and do something. It's very student led. So whatever you're kind of looking forward to doing, you can figure out a way to do it. Um, before we went into quarantine, we were working on Little Women. And then this year, I think we're planning on doing like kind of like shorter, like individual scenes and monologues. Um, it's really interesting and it's really fun. And a lot of artsy things at Baruch can take place in the terms of clubs. So if you see something and you're like, oh, I really wanna do X, Y, Z, then you can make a club for that and participate in that kind of art thing. Uh, also, as mentioned by Ms. Perez, at Baruch, we have a annual poetry slam that is really, really super fun that anyone of any grade can take part in, um, but it is directly in the curriculum of the 10th graders. And I always thought that was something really special about Baruch because it's like a school-wide event that's really fun and gets everybody involved, um, but it's both included in the education and the arts. Uh, yeah, there's, you know, there's a lot of fun things to do. Thanks, Leela. Hello there, everybody. Nice to see you all and be with you all here this evening. As I said earlier, my name is Douglas Geyser. I am the assistant principal. And I'll take a moment here to talk about the special education department at Brew College Campus High School. We have a uh, quite a robust special education department and our core philosophy is around inclusion. We believe in, that all students are capable of rigorous instruction and we deliver the same rigorous instruction to all kinds of learners. Uh, we do this in many ways. We have strong te teacher partnerships where both special education teachers are content specialists in either humanities or in STEM. And our general education teachers are very skilled pedagogues. They're very crafty with teaching. We also have about half of our core classes on all grades are co-taught, special education teacher and a general education teacher teacher in the same class. And we believe in um, models of instruction like universal design for learning, which essentially believes that you need one lesson plan crafted in a way that gives access to all kinds of learners, not you know one thing for one group of kids and a different thing for a different group of kids. We craft our lessons and our units in a way that delivers the same rigorous, inclusive instruction to all levels of learners. So that's uh, special ed at Brew College Campus High School in a nutshell. Um, Brew College Campus High School is very focused on community building and social emotional support. We do this in many ways with our um, four year uh, advisory program, our robust guidance program, SEL curriculum um, in built into our regular instructions. And I believe we probably have some students who could speak more to that. Yeah, is Leaky here? Le Leaky, did you get back on? Yes, I think it's working. Oh, it's working. Hear me well? Okay, so Leaky loves advisory and she's going to talk about her advisory experience. I love my advisory so much. It's probably my favorite thing about Brooke. I'll repeat what it is. Basically, it's a class that meets twice a week for all four years, and you're with the same group of students and the same teacher who's your advisor. And 
it's a great way for us students to have our own mini communities at Baruch where we feel even more safe and comfortable to talk about whatever is on our minds. And we also do this activity called a circle in which we take a step back from whatever's going on at school and we discuss issues we see in and outside of our community, which I really appreciate because sometimes there are issues that we need to talk about and um, it's very stress relieving. Also, a really cool thing about advisory is that you, you get to do like trips and like celebrations. My advisory, kind of brag, I think I have the best advisor at Brooke, so I have a lot of fun. We have birthday celebrations and uh, we're trying to plan a trip to go either ice skating or bowling as an advisory. Um, other times we've gone to like different business organizations and we've learned a lot. So advisory is a really cool place to be. Thanks, Leaky. Uh, another way that we build community is and give uh, emotional, social emotional support is through our guidance program. And Giselle is going to talk about that. Um, hi, um, I'm Giselle. And the guidance support is pretty um, important. And I think it's probably one of the also another best thing about Baruch is how welcoming our guidance counselors are. Miss um, Smith is our guidance counselor for ninth and 10th grade. And then you also have one when you get to 11th and 12th grade. Um, they are there for anything you really need, honestly. Like they're there for emotional support, which is, it gets stressful when you get to high school. Um, I think a lot of us can understand that. So you definitely are gonna be relying on your guidance counselors a lot. Um, and yeah. <laughs> like guidance counselors at Miss at Brooke are probably one of the best um, people. Uh, thanks. You got frozen on there, Giselle. Um, you there? I was going to have her talk about town halls, but I'd like Maud to talk about our senior mentor program that provides specific support for the ninth graders. So. As I said uh, during my introduction, I was part of the senior mentor group this year since I was the one organizing it. And senior mentors are a way for seniors to help ninth graders in more like small groups because like some ninth graders might not feel comfortable like talking in like big group advisory. So like the senior mentors are there to talk just do what usually advisories do and just like a smaller group as of usually like four to like six students for this year it's four to six students per pair of senior mentors and like the senior mentors become like now you're like immediate go-to but uh they've been in the school Another a longer school. time so they can just help with like more personal type issues that people might not feel comfortable like talking about in like big groups. And don't you take them on a walk around the area like to show them the where to go for lunch, you know, that kind of thing to it. Yes, this, we do, everything do, do that. Um, we just get them more familiar with the school environment as well as like our mini high school campus yeah and because like we have a lot of food places around so it's always a nice nice thing to do leaky wanted to add on to something for the senior mentor yeah so when i was a freshman it was so nice having my i was like friends with my senior mentor and it was nice even if i wasn't like close friends with them just having that friendly face to like say hi to in the hallways because uh, our hallways are pretty small it's like a really comforting feeling and you don't feel like you're alone and also our, um, our teacher, Miss Barron, who like organizes the senior mentors and a couple of students, I think Maude actually, and one other girl, they uh, paid a lot of attention to, to matching freshmen with seniors so that they are with people who identify the same way or who like certain things um, and have a bunch of things in common. So we do a good job in making sure that freshmen will feel comfortable with whoever their senior mentor is. Yeah, that's true. And I recently heard from, a graduate who was a freshman in college and was still speaking to his senior mentor who was a senior in college and they were still in touch and had that relationship going, still going. So 
So there's a lot of opportunities for community and social emotional support at Baruch. Our school is a school that is um, dedicated to the work of equity and becoming an anti-racist environment, becoming an anti-racist school. Uh, we do that work in uh, quite a few avenues. It's uh, embedded in curriculum and curriculum development and we're um, moving towards an ever more inclusive curriculum. We also have a lot of clubs um, with students and uh, student and staff um, uh, organizations where we are working directly on these causes and these concerns. And we are becoming an ever more diverse school. If you look at the pie chart here, you can see what our current ninth grade looks like. And it's we are becoming a more and more diverse school, making this type of work ever more um, pressing and, and important. And we are dedicated to it. And I think there are students here who can speak more to their experiences in this work at our school. Yeah, I was gonna ask Elizabeth to speak on behalf of the BLSU. Hi everyone, I'm Elizabeth. Um, so I'm on the executive board for BLSU and BLSU stands for Black and Latino Student Union. Um, when I first transferred to Baruch, um, this club played like a really um, big role in me like um, becoming a part of the community. Um, like when I first joined Baruch, uh, the, the school wasn't like this diverse. So like that, that club was like a space for me to um, feel like I belong in the school and not feel like, you know, um, like not exactly feel like a minority in a way. And my, it was a way for like an outlet for my voice to be heard. So if I had any concerns or anything like that, I would um, like share it during this club. And um, it would always somehow get, like it would get to equity team and then they would talk about it. So um, BLSU was not just a space for me to like, um, feel like I belong, but it was also a space for me to um, develop my voice and become a leader in the school. So, yeah. What are some of the things you did with the BLSU, Elizabeth? Um, so uh, when I first started, we had like discussions surrounding race and like current events. And then um, we also like, like this year, we had like a really fun fundraiser where we um, so, um, sold candy during Halloween. And this is going towards like the funds to our, our club so we can have like fun trips um in my sophomore year we also had like a a really fun trip where we got we went to um i think we went somewhere in times square and we watched a show um Did you go see a film or a uh, play yeah it was a play it was a black history month um performance so yeah it was really fun and then i think there was a trip to dc one year yeah um that was i think during freshman year but i wasn't here during that time but i heard it was really fun so I did that trip. I was gonna say, I think Lauren went on that trip. Um, and then also we have um, the equity team, which Giselle's part of. So Giselle, can you talk a little bit about the town halls that the equity team has sponsored? Uh, yes, um, so the equity team are the ones who sponsor and like kind of organize the town halls and how it works is that you will take a period off from your regular class, your regular class and you would go into like a room, like room, usually the cafeteria to just have this whole presentation um, devoted to one specific topic. So it would be like, we just did one um, a few weeks ago, like a week ago, we did one on bias-based language. And so we just had the ninth graders um, sit there, listen to what we had to say, but also help making sure that they were engaged as well by asking them questions and like showing videos and just, we also go to the advisories afterwards to talk with more personally to them to make sure that they, you know, really understand um, about the topic at hand and make sure that they, you know, just attain all the knowledge and stuff. Um, and yeah, that's how town halls work. They're usually pretty engaging and I did find it very um, helpful to see it all pan out. And then you also hear from students on equity team about their own like experiences and stuff so I think it's very helpful and it's just like a great way for everyone to get and town halls are an opportunity for for even people who aren't on the equity team to express concerns or ask questions right yeah equity team is not um solely based for like you know um African Americans or you know white people but it's also for you know if you're a part of the LGBTQ you can come there and talk about your concerns or if you are um, an advocator for um, women you know sexual assault we're all planning on like doing something about that we want 
everyone's voice is heard and yeah. Just add yeah. That we have um, the leaders of the different identity clubs are part of the equity team. So we have the presidents of BLSU, our um, Gender Sexuality Alliance, Asian Affinity, Chinese Culture Club. Um, so we have representatives from different groups, but then it's also open to any student and staff member that wants to join. So we have teachers, administration, guidance, and we've done the town halls, which came from something students wanted to do. They wanted to bring that into our school. So it's student-led. We've also written our equity pledge, had different documents and resources for our school. So it's a way we can continue to support our community, but also hear from our community and respond to them. Thank you. All right, Leaky wants to talk about athletics, I know. <laughs> so hi everybody, I am captain of the girls varsity basketball team and captain of the varsity fencing team. And so we do have a pretty good amount of sports here at Brug. Our fall sports, which all did really well this year, they went to like third, second round of playoffs um, and we're really proud of them. Our fall sports are boys and girls varsity soccer and girls varsity volleyball. Um, soccer usually practices on fields near the East River, and they have games at Randall's Island, and volleyball practices in our gym, um, and they go to other schools for games. Our winter sports are boys varsity and junior varsity basketball, girls varsity basketball, and varsity wrestling, which is co-ed. The basketball teams practice at Brew College, and sometimes outside because of COVID, we've been going to the parks. I don't know about now since it's kind of cold outside, but uh, hopefully we don't have to do that. And wrestling happens in our own gym with matches at other schools around the city. Our spring sports are girls varsity softball, boys varsity baseball, and varsity fencing, which is co-ed. Softball and baseball also practice near the... Did I freeze? I just got a message saying out my internet is unstable. No, you're there. Good? You're good. Okay. Yay. Okay. Uh, sorry. They also practice near the East River, and fencing happens in our own gym. And I think joining a team is a great opportunity to take on a leadership role, meet new people in every grade. It is a time commitment, but it's overall a pretty great experience. And our community at Baruch is, we have a lot of school spirit and we support each other um, and it's really fun. Thank you. There's also um, some sports clubs um, that such as Ultimate Frisbee, uh, running clubs. So there's different clubs that are not technically PSAL sports. It's not actually that easy to start a PSAL sport. Um, but we have, but so a lot of kids were interested in running. So they've started a, a, a running club and yeah, adding on those, both the ultimate Frisbee and the track were started by students. Yeah. I was going to start a flag football team, but, or club, but um, COVID happened. So we couldn't do that, but like, it's pretty easy to start a club. Like anything you want that Brooke is missing, you can start a club for it, which is great. All right. And so speaking to talk, of clubs. <laughs> right. To talk about clubs, like uh, if there's a, a, one of many tropes that are important at our school, it's community and clubs are a great, great way to build community. Clubs are centered around all sorts of things. They could be around causes. They could become around athletics. They could be around the arts. We have clubs that are pretty standard in every high school in America like UNICEF and National Honor Society, for example. And then we have wholly um, unique clubs. And as many of the students said um, this evening, uh, it's pretty easy to, to form a club if you have X amount of students interested and an adult who is willing to, a staff member who has the time to stay with you after school, you pretty much can get a club started. And uh, I think there are some students here who have a lot of experience who could share more about that. Well, Giselle's the uh, club coordinator for Student Gov. So do you want to talk about the club fair and how kids start clubs? Uh, yeah, so club fair before pre-COVID were, you know, actually pretty fun where you have like this whole cafeteria, everyone brings their board, decorates it, goes around telling people to sign up for their clubs. And it's just like this whole big thing. But because of COVID, we had to do it in the lobby where you just sign up to have your club presented. And then when you're walking out of school or coming into school, you can sign up and then go to class. Um, so yeah. And then starting clubs, like Mr. Kaiser said, it's pretty straightforward. Um, you just need to have an advisor, X amount of students, and most likely your club will get accepted um, or get approved. 
Um, and there's like a lot of clubs. Um, there's also like the dance club. There's also, you know, the skateboard club that was just started this year. Um, Ocean Conservation Club that was just started this year. So um, there's a lot of clubs to get involved and to meet new people from different grades and everything. And I think uh, someone else was gonna talk about their club. Leaky? Yeah, so during COVID, I actually started a um, basketball enrichment club at Brooke. Um, it was through Zoom, but it was still pretty cool. And that goes to show like, like starting a club is pretty easy, especially if you can find um, people who are interested in the same thing as you and if you can find a teacher. So it's, I would recommend it. Don't be afraid to start a club. It's awesome. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> One thing we're very proud of at Brew College Campus High School is not only educating your students to be, um, these youngsters to be productive students to get a great high school education, we are preparing them for college and four year university. And we have an excellent track record in placing um, our graduates into college after they graduate, about a 99 0.9% of our students do go on to uh, a college, university, four-year institution, two-year school, all kinds of schools, from community college to private school, in-state, out-of-state, international, Ivy League, SUNY, CUNY. Students are going somewhere, and we're very proud of the work that we do. Here are some of the places that some of our students regularly go to. We support this work in a lot of ways throughout the four years by having access to college now classes through CUNY where students can earn college credit by having um, different SAT and ACT prep organizations, by offering AP courses, a um, lot of opportunities for AP courses and to earn college credit at Baruch College Campus High School over your four years with us. We actually have elective classes that are college seminars in 11th and 12th grade where students are earning high school credit as they prepare for their high, uh, college application and research what schools they wanna go to. Um, while the research writing that takes place in our 11th and 12th grade English classes is also designed around supporting students in the college application process. Uh, our students enter our school on an advanced Regents Diploma track, um, which always puts students in a, in a good place and good positioning for their application. We have a dedicated guidance um, office uh, called the college office with a dedicated guidance counselor, I should say, whose full-time job it is to support the um, college process. However, all our guidance counselors support that process in some way over the four years as it does our advisory program. And students, take it away. I'm sure you have more to say. I think Maud, were you gonna talk a little bit about the college process for you? College is a difficult process. It's similar to high school, it's just broader. Um, you get introduced to college prep, I guess, in the second half of your 11th grade year, where instead of taking elective classes, you're taking the beginnings of college seminar where you get like the basics of college, like you get like the, your Naviance account, you learn a bit more about um, the different like application routes and you start researching like what colleges you want to go to, what majors can interest you. In 12th grade, you um, continue your college elective work, but it gets like more specific on like college essays, uh, college applications, and our guidance counselors will help you keep track of all the applications you want to send out. Like for me, Personally, I have an early action deadline December 1st, and my college counselor is keeping like me like ready and like making sure I have everything ready, like on time so that I can apply to the college I want. Maud, how did they do um, in the world of COVID when there's not a lot of tours or in-person stuff? How did they do college visits this year? Um, Every college was very open and they did um, virtual tours. And in 12th grade, you do have um, on Naviance, you can sign up to learn more about a college. So they do um, college visits, reps come to the school? Yes, this year it was virtually, but I'm pretty sure like in past years, pre-COVID, uh, they actually mm -hmm. came to our school and I'm pretty sure the students actually went to the campuses right. to learn more about them. 
Um, but like just in general, like the college counselors and just the colleges in general have done a really good job at um, helping students get into college, even through the pandemic. Um, yeah, like. Thank you, Maud. They also be, most colleges also became test optional, which I'm pretty sure was a ginormous help for like a lot of like seniors. <laughs> Thanks. All right. The one thing everyone's been asking about. Yeah, well, everyone and us as well. Um, so I'm going to share with you what we know about admissions. You probably have heard this if other schools have held information sessions and on their websites. We are still waiting to hear from the Office of Admissions in terms of when high school applications are due and um, any other information in terms of what we can and cannot screen for. So we don't have that information to share with you, but what I will share with you is what we do know that we have and what we've done historically. So as a school, we are a screened high school. Um, so that means we do screen for something. So what we screen for at Baruch are, are academic grades. We used to screen for grades and attendance um, and test scores. However, during COVID, we stopped looking at attendance, I believe as did all schools. Um, and we did not look at test scores last year because of the pandemic. So what it depends on, we're waiting to hear back from the Office of Admissions. Last year, we chose to only look at academic grades. Um, we have in the past, traditionally, we would look at seventh grade, uh, final grades and test scores. Our screen is an 85 average in seventh grade grades. We're not sure how that's gonna impact this year because we know students have had grade waivers, students didn't sit for tests. So that's why we're waiting for some guidance from the Office of Admissions. So we will post on our website as soon as we get that information and let you know. Um, aside from that, we don't have any other screens. There are no essays or applications for our school. So the only thing you need to do as a prospective student is if you're interested in Baruch, uh, put us on your list of 12 schools. And, you know, we are a small school. We have about 130 students is what we end up with in our ninth grade every year. So we accept about 150 students to get to that number. But we definitely have lots of applicants. So it's, um, you know, we hope you can come. In terms of how we select students, we do not rank in priority order. We believe that if you meet our screen, then you're going to be successful at Baruch. So once you put us down, you will be assigned by the Office of Admissions. Uh, there's like a number and then they kind of, it's like almost like a random selection. They will randomly select and place students at Baruch. We are part of the diversity and enrollment uh, program. And so as part of that, as we mentioned before, as part of our commitment to being a diverse and equitable school, we are a citywide program now that went into effect last year. So we are, there is no geographic screen to come to Baruch. So as any student who's in a private parochial public school in any of the five boroughs of New York City charter as well can apply to and come to Baruch. So we hope that you consider us and we will post more information when we get it online. There was a question, uh, do you, um, is 85 average the same for students with IEPs? Yes, um, it is. We do have, um, if we don't fill our seats, if we don't have enough applicants to meet our screen, then we will lower the screen. But first the seats will go towards the students who meet the screen. So it would really depend on. Yeah, and I think it's really important to note that we don't actually see the, we don't do any of the rankings. This is all done at the Central um, Office of Admissions. And they, so we, because there's a bunch of questions about us looking at different things, but we don't look at any of it. They so, do it. We have our, our criteria and they do all the rankings after that. Yeah. So it's one rubric for all students, whether they have an IEP or our general education and it's an 85 average. Last year, our rubric was, which I can speak to, because that's the one that was approved, is an 85 average on your seventh grade core subjects and the office of enrollment does that calculation for us. So we don't even, all we see are a list of names that have applied. We don't even see grades or data or anything mm -hmm. until we get our final list at the school level. So for you applying, it's 85 average seventh grade grades um, would allow you to meet our criteria. 
Um, special education seats are separate from gen ed seats. So we do hold seats. So you're not, the special ed students are not competing for the same seats as our gen ed. And that's in every city, um, that's in every school. That's how that program works. But it is the same screen for all students. And just to reiterate, we do not review state tests. We do not look at any uh, test scores. Um, we didn't last year, but we right. did prior to the pandemic. So I'm anticipating because of COVID, I don't see why we would look at them this year because most students didn't sit for the test. So again, we don't have any final answers because we haven't had to submit anything to the Office of Enrollment. They haven't contacted us yet about uh, deadlines or submitting information. There was a question in the chat saying, is if, it, if the lottery is for anyone so the question exactly is, so it, it is a lottery for anyone above an 85 formatted as a question? Right, it's an 85 average or higher for anyone who meets our screen and then it's a random selection from there, yes. Yeah. Okay, all right. Just so what we're- If it's the combined average for the entire seventh grade year because the grades were different in seventh grade, so we're really still waiting for guidance from, from the Office of High School Admissions. Correct, correct. So again, I would just say when you're applying to high school, there's many, many schools, you're making lots of choices. If you're feeling excited about Baruch, put us on your list. And like we tell our students when they're applying to college, have a wide range of schools, um, some big, some small, look at the different, uh, different options in terms of enrollment. We are a small school, so we are competitive because of that. And we are a highly desirable school because of, of that's just the truth of where we are. So we do get a lot of applicants, but you never know. Um, so just make your list of 12 and see how it goes. Thank you so much for coming this evening. Thank you for considering Baruch College Campus High School as one of your choices and best of luck to you in the high school application process.